Good morning all. New printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Uh, the box kindly reshaped by DHL. Let's take a look inside here. And these are, oh, very nicely wrapped. My new Cell Connect PCBs, which connect uh, my new lithium ion phosphate cells together and have a little chippy up at the top. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, let's get in close on that chip and use a magnifying glass. And it is an ACS 712 05B. So it's a 5 amp uh, current sensor, which will measure, I hope, the balance current. And I just hesitated there, hesitated there for a second because I thought, wait a minute, surely the current measurement's not on pins one, two, three, and four, but actually it is. So those are the high current pins. Why isn't that focusing? Yeah, so um, coming from the cell, where the uh, silkscreen text is there, that's the cell interconnect. That goes into pins one and two, and then pins three and four go to those three bolt holes which will be for the balance lead. So that chip just simply measures any balancing currents that's going to those three holes. Of course, it's not measuring the main cell current going between these two large holes um, because this is only a five amp sensor. There are a couple of uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors there. One is across uh, VCC, which will be on that three pin header. Um, that will be an Arduino DuPont style header. Uh, the other one is the filter capacitor. So I went for 100 nanofarads again. I seem to remember um, in a lot of the uh, datasheet stuff, it's got 0.1 nanofarads and it was absolutely hopeless. So for slow moving uh, current values, you want a bigger capacitor. I think I used 470N, but that's a 100N. So that should give a reasonable compromise um, filtering function. Uh, so I went for 10 of these. Now I think I'm going to need nine uh, because we've got eight cells and I could potentially measure um, certainly all of the points where the two cells connect together, but the extremes, you might want to measure currents flowing in and out of the end points of my eight cell pack. So let's bring in my pack and see if these fit. So here's my uh, pack of uh, lithium ion phosphate cells. It's quite heavy, is this. 32 cells, it's uh, eight in series, four in parallel. And I noticed that um, the two boxes of these cells actually had different measured values. Some of them were around 6,000 milliamp hours, some were around 6,200 milliamp hours. Um, so what I've done is I think I've put them in alternate rows. Now they're all in parallel, so the amp hour values will all just add up. So hopefully all of these uh, eight series cells should be roughly the same. But that's not what I wanted to check. I wanted to check whether my boards, these, fit over these studs. Hmm. So here we go. Uh, that's going to fit kind of like that yes that fits rather well let's get another one here we are and that's going to go there and then on the other side on the back of this uh, we'll put one across there of course but on the other side so that looks pretty good let's get another one on there yeah they fit rather well and i did notice that um there are these flats if you can see them, um, on the plastic mouldings, the frame that's holding all this together. And if I start putting bolt, uh, nuts on these, it will pull the cell into the plastic mouldings. So it'll help to hold this thing all together in a sort of coherent, homogeneous thing. Now I've noticed that the brazed on copper thread has a slight ridge on it, which sits slightly off the surface of the cell here. Um, and that's good because it looks like it's at about the same height as the plastic molding there. So when I tighten the 
nuts onto here. Let's put a nut on here. Um, this should all tighten down and all be uh, reasonably flat. There won't be too much flexing of the PCB. So that looks pretty good. Now the other thing was that I noticed that these studs weren't necessarily exactly centered um, on the cells. So I've made these holes a bit bigger. They're I think five mil and these studs are four mil thread. So there is a bit of looseness there, but I think I've got that about right because those fit pretty fantastically. Let's get some nuts on here. And so the balance points are uh, sitting up above uh, the top of the frame here. So you can put up to three bolts in there. Now those are M3s uh, so that I can use the smaller ring terminals to connect. Uh, well, there'll be the BMS. There'll be um, a, a set of balance leads for my little um, monitor display of which uh, this is one. But I've also got the little... Um, OLED version as well and then the third one will be for the the active balancer so you can have up to three devices on each of the cell interconnect points but let's get these four on now I made these um, not full height because the problem is the distance between these cell centers is something really horrible it's not on a nice grid point it's not quite 34 millimeters I think it's something like 34.25 so I figured what I might do is make a second PCB, which is just literally a square to go down here and then bridge across with a couple of my uh, wire links that I made up these. I mean, I could bridge all of this bottom section with these wire links, but I worked out I'd need 32 of them, which is quite a lot. So I'll just put the fourth one of these on there. Uh, I'll stick some nuts on here. I'm going to need a lot of these M4 nuts, aren't I? That'll be the next thing. I'll run out of M4 nuts. Um, and then I'll put some of these on the other side. Now, um, these are going to go in the middle positions on the other side. So three of them will fit neatly. The two um, others, if I use them, will sit out of the battery pack. So they won't be quite as neat. But I could make another board with an ACS712, um, which is just a sort of single width just linking two cells together, but there's no real need for that. And I do have 10 of these PCBs. So let's just see how we go with these. Now, quite clearly, I don't want to put this board on directly opposite that board because then I'll have a complete loop um, and very large amounts of current will flow. This um, copper area here, unlike my distribution XT90 board, oh, which I have, here, this one, where the top was 24 volts and the bottom ground. On this board, top and bottom copper areas are both the same net. They're both a net which I called cell because it's the cell interconnect. And I've actually peppered this thing with a few vias. I'm not sure that was absolutely essential. Um, so we've just got two copper planes carrying the same current. Um, so yes, I very much definitely have to put that here so that should be fine to put it there in the gap opposite these ones so let's get some of those on um i was going to say something else about this oh yes this business about current flowing uh, left to right here could create a magnetic field so i've got the current flowing in the current sensor chip in the uh, perpendicular direction and i'm hoping that currents flowing in this main copper area won't affect the current reading of this chip because it is a Hall effect magnetic chip. It won't affect this too uh, much, but uh, only time will tell on that. Yes, yeah, so this one will go there, won't it? Yes, no explosion, that's good. Um, I'm, I've found I've got washers for these, so I'm gonna put washers on. And then like I say, on the end it's going to be like that so this will stick out over the side but i may want to measure the balance currents coming on to this end point and also this end point um, the way this is laid out because it's eight cells fortunately both end points are on 
one side so I can put this on the back of my shelf. This is an endpoint. This is an endpoint. In fact, if I get all these PCBs on, I should be able to put my 24 volt bulb across there and it should light up nice and bright. Now, naturally, I used the JLC PCB uh, SMT, surface mount uh, technology, assembly service for these boards because I didn't want to have to solder this chip and those two capacitors on, so that was all done for me. Um, these chips actually were surprisingly expensive. I think they were $3 each, so of course, 10 of those, uh, $30. I think the total order value, and of course that's including DHL postage, was something around $75. So just go around these with a seven millimeter. It is a spanner tightening these four millimeter or M4 nuts. Just tighten these up. I'm not gonna massively overdo it. I just want enough tension that we get a good connection to the PCB. Someone was talking about the crush force of these fiberglass PCBs. Um, I think I looked this up and it was something similar to aluminium. So they take a fair amount of crushing force. Uh, I don't think you're going to collapse the, the through plated hole by applying a huge force. I mean, I'm not going to talk these up with a massive force. I'm missing a nut there. Let's find a nut. And then I'm going to see whether that across there, yes, 24 volts is safe. The phone's ringing. Right, let's flip this over. And that's the other side. I haven't put washers on this, so I'm going to take all these nuts off, the few that there are, put washers on, put nuts on, and that's uh, my pack. Now, of course, I'm only using the top two rows. Um, like I say, I'll perhaps make some more PCBs for the bottom rows and then make up link wires for that. I think that's what I'll do. That uh, phone call was, uh, thank you for placing a £400 order for something you don't remember placing a £400 order for. Now that you're suitably shocked and appalled that uh, you've placed this £400 order, phone, phone this number and be scammed out of all your money. Yes, so we don't respond to those, do we? Good, so gradually populating this thing with PCBs. Why isn't that one going down? I don't know. Um, washers and nuts. Let's get this whole thing linked up. And I should have a 24 volt lithium ion phosphate battery pack. And that's it. All the nuts are done up and tight. Now you can see what's coming next, can't you? Um, I must admit, I did hope, I was hoping that this three pin array might be clear of the top of this plastic, but it's not. So the pins will have to come out this side. But yes, you can see where we're going. I'm going to put a board on the top of here, which is going to be a homebrew Arduino board, a couple of OLEDs, um, and all the wiring connection points for these ACS 712s. And this board will show at all times on these OLEDs um, all the balance currents that are coming into and out of all these cell uh, interconnects. So that could be quite exciting. Right, quick test with a 24 volt bulb. Let's go most negative over there. Um, I'll hold that onto the side of my 24 volt bulb. This is going to be bright, isn't it? Put it on there. 24 volts going into my bulb. Very nice, of course that's only using the top row of cells because I don't have a link down there. But let's try putting two more of these boards on that stick out the sides and just see how stupid it looks. So that's the uh, five interconnects and these are the extremities, of course that's most ooh, positive and that's most negative. So I'll do my bulb test again which will go on there and that lights up nicely. Um, yes, and that of course means that we can measure all nine of the balance currents uh, from battery minus the most negative point to battery positive. I mean, there will be a current flowing uh, into or out of 
all nine of these connect points, five on this side and four on the other side. And that of course leaves me with uh, one of these left over. I ordered 10, but that's okay, that can act as a spare. Now this issue about using uh, PCBs as bus bars, I reckoned, I think it was something like, um, this would be good for about 20 amps per side. So I'm thinking 40 amps um, for this entire PCB. Now you wouldn't normally, I think, if you were going to pull an arbitrary amount of current from this pack, say you were going to hook it up to an inverter and, I don't know, run a toaster or something, you probably wouldn't choose to use printed circuit boards as your cell interconnects. But of course I'm only pulling a known current which is going to go into my ant miner. Um, now if I'm saying that I can pull about 40 amps through this board, then that's at 25 volts, at 12 volts once it's gone through the buck regulator. Of course it can't handle 80 amps, but we should be looking at about 80 amps um, into the crypto miner before I'm likely to have any uh, temperature, significant temperature rise on these boards. I suppose thinking about it, these uh, vias I put in here, if this started to get warm, you could perhaps uh, think about it delaminating slightly away from the fiberglass substrate and these vias could help to keep the two sides held together. I think if you were getting to the point where this was getting significantly warm, you'd be in trouble anyway. But uh, yeah, I certainly think these are going to be fine in my application but I probably wouldn't recommend PCBs as bus bars if you're going to pull an arbitrarily large current from your battery and most people probably would want to do that. I don't. Yeah, so the next couple of PCBs, I've kind of spoiled the surprise a bit really. Um, as I say, I'm going to need a square one for the bottom and then I can just link the top and bottom current connect PCBs. Um, and actually, if, if I'm saying I can put 40 amps through there, then of course, with a second board down here and some thick interconnect cables, I should be looking at 80 amps. I don't think it's going to get to that point. Um, but yeah, PCBs can take a fair amount of current. Um, yeah, so these uh, bottom PCBs will, I'll have to do. And like I say, uh, the whole point of making these boards with the ACS712 current sensor and of course I chose this because it's galvanically isolated. There's no electrical connection between the current measuring thing here. All that, that's inside this chip is a piece of wire running across there. And then a Hall effect device on this side, which you can reference. And I can reference the 5 volt um, supply, supply power to these chips all from the same 5 volts. Because as I say, there's a galvanic isolation down the middle of the chip here. Um, yes, an Arduino board here with some displays telling us um, the in and out currents on every single one of these nine PCBs. So that is my latest uh, printed circuit board. It is a cell interconnect PCB with integrated uh, current measurement chip. I think that's quite neat. What do you think? Cheerio.